Hey y'all, Mikey from Rockin' K, and we are working on moving our homestead off-grid. We're already off-grid for our heating system for the most part. We are supplying electricity for that heating system. So, the next step is to get that electricity off-grid and be supplying it with solar energy. Part of that is getting a battery system set up. So today, I am going to show you how I set up my DC Lynx power in to have fuses and all that. So, stay tuned. Okay, so folks, so as you know, here on the homestead, we're trying to go off grid. And I want my heater to work when the power's out. I want my heater to work if there's an issue with the grid. So with that said, means I gotta, I gotta feed it with solar. So for now, I don't have my panels and stuff like that, but I need to start finishing up my battery system. I filmed this a, a little while ago, and um, it's back when I built my batteries and I modified this for uh, using my batteries and everything. And so the actual footage is a little bit older, but it's still the way I, the way I modified mine to, to do all this. Um, Victron Energy, it's good stuff, man. But man, it's expensive. And getting yourself a DC power in first is gonna be a really good step towards your battery system and having it as, you know, uh, Victron Energy. Uh, I would recommend the power in first the shunt second and the DC distributor third. The reason is the DC power in does not have a circuit board in it and doesn't require power. It will fulfill your needs for power in and power out from your inverter and your batteries. The only thing is it doesn't have um, fuses. This, what I'm doing here is gonna let you add fuses and it's really simple. You don't need a separate fuse block on your, on your power wall or anything like that. This will set that all up for you. The other, only other thing I'm gonna use in my DC system alongside of the link system is actual switches to physically disconnect the batteries and physically disconnect the inverter. So I will be setting up switches between the DC power in and the battery and switches between the DC power in and the inverter itself. This way I can 100% isolate each battery or I can just turn off the whole DC system as it goes to the inverter. So this is just the real quick, there is a bunch of videos out there on mo making this modification. I've watched a couple of them. That's how I got the idea. Um, I can't give credit to any single in individual or any single channel because there's so many out there. Um, I, I looked at a bunch and well, yeah, so I didn't build, I didn't do this for a tutorial or anything like that. I just did it to show you how I'm doing mine. And so uh, what you'll see is a little bit older footage of me uh, going ahead and opening up this DC power in and making the, the quick modification. Uh, like I said, this is going to be my first piece of equipment on the power wall. Uh, reason being, it doesn't have the circuit board, doesn't require power. My second piece is going to be the DC shunt so that I'm able to monitor power in and power out, uh, how much power, power I use for my batteries and how much power I put into my batteries. So uh, that'll be my second piece of equipment. And then of course the third, because then I have the power from the DC shunt, will be the DC distributor, followed by the Cerebo GX so that the whole system talks to, it, to, to itself. And I can actually jump in and look on the computer and see the health and what's going on with my system and how charged my batteries are and everything like that. Um, that's, that is the plan. So uh, without further ado, here is my really quick video on how I modified my DC power in. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And without further ado, like I said, here we go. Okay, here's the guts of the system, and here's why I say it's a really neat system. You have two bus bars in here, 1,000 amp bus bars. And 
while this particular unit is designed for the cable to lay through here and connect here, and this is their, their power in, is designed this way. Their, um, I think the DC distributor has a circuit board and fuses and all that that you can put in there. This is their, their, their Lynx power in. It doesn't come with the ability to have fuses, but they use the same thing for the, for the DC distributor. So what we do is we take these off of here with, there's four screws. There's one, two, three, four. Pop those screws, pop this thing off, and you get that hardware in there. And now you got the ability for fuses. So I'm going to pop this open. Drop my stuff in there, and then I'll come back and talk about it. All right, so all back together. It actually takes longer for me to talk about it than it does to, to actually put this thing together. So bolts are in. They're tightened up. Remember, this is plastic. You don't want to destroy it. So seated and snug, that's enough. Now what this does is it gives me now posts so that I can put fuses in here. So my plan is to use this as power in and power out. So let me get my fuses in and then I'm going to explain everything in detail. Okay, folks, there she is. Okay, there she is the way I'm going to use it. So if you look closely, you'll see that there's a 125 amp, 125 amp, and then there's a 200 amp over here. So I'm using this with a 3000 watt inverter. It'll never pull 200 amps. If it pulls over 200 amps, there's a problem. Even with a surge load, um, we're good. So my BMSs output 100 amps on the two batteries that I'm hooking up. With a surge to 125 or golden, uh, they will go into overload protect at um, 1,100 watts anyway. So the BMS should stop it before the uh, the fuse blows. But if it doesn't, the fuse can go ahead and, and it can pop. I have extras. And yeah, so I will hook the negative up down here on the three of them. So these... Battery negative, battery negative, negative to my inverter charger. Positive battery, positive battery, positive to my inverter charger. So what this will allow is the power, the batteries be hooked up here, inverter here. The power can go in from the inverter and out to the batteries or it can go out from the batteries and into the inverter. Right now I don't have the rest of the, the equipment. The equipment is expensive, I told you. It's like the supercar of, uh, of battery equipment, you know, of solar equipment. So the shunt adds onto this, which will give you the capability of measuring power in and power out. And then the actual, this is the Lynx power in. Then you have the DC distributor, which has the computer board, and that will give you the, fuse, the fuses and let you know when the fuses have, have popped and all that. I'll probably stick with two Lynx powers. I'm not even sure. Um, we'll see. But then you have this nice cover. covers up all your stuff, right? So let's, you know, that's where your battery cable is going. If you need to install this, the other way around, what's cool is they give you a sticker to put on it so that it reads right. It's in the box. I'm not going to install it upside down because I'm worried about stuff falling in. They do have little bars. You can see them in there to protect the terminals. But I'm just worried dust, debris, crap, you know, stuff is going to fall in there. So... I'm going to mount it this way and have my cables come up through the bottom. It's just safer that way. But that's my intent. That's what my plan is. The next time you see this, it'll be going in and being installed on the wall in the one garage. 
but like I said, this is, you know, this is a bus bar and fuses all in one. I will be having um, disconnect switches in between the battery and this unit so that we can actually disco the batteries to power down the, the solar system 100%, but it works. Two 125 amps for uh, my two batteries, and like I said, the 200 amper for my uh, inverter charger. Uh, quick, simple, easy. I really didn't want to go into much detail because they've beaten this down. I'm just putting this out there because this is how I'm using mine. I'm going to use one for in and out for right now, you know, for uh, battery and inverter with the plan on, uh, you know, adding the whole system as I start using the system and, you know, the money saved is going to be the money invested kind of thing because my plan is to end up with four batteries so that I will need the rest of the system because it'll be, you know, all four of these will be used for batteries coming in. This way I have plenty of reserve power, but that's the plan. Uh, I think it's kind of a solid one. It's my opinion. Um, others, others have the opinion of the, the DC uh, power in and the DC uh, distributor and all that are just too expensive pieces of equipment to use. I mean, when you sit down and you, you add up a bus bar and a fuse block and all that, and then you got to connect the fuse block to the bus bar and, you know, when you add it all up, yeah, it, 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 it's about the same. The shunt is expensive. I will give it that. The shunt is 200 and some odd dollars. But the shunt will allow me to measure power in, power out of my batteries. And it's seamless with the with the Victron system. My plan is to end up with 100% Victron because I want something that I can I can set it and forget it. And that, that's what Victron is. Victron is you 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 set it up, you call it done. So in keeping with my motto, reach out to a loved one, a friend. If you're thinking of them, let them know you're thinking of them. Either with a, you know, give them a what's up or a WhatsApp, whatever works for you. And until the next adventure, auf Wiedersehen. Mm -hmm.